from your perspective, what has been the most dramatic shift that you have seen to your business and to how your customers are accessing data? What types of data are they looking to access? Um, and, and you know, what are some of the um, drivers of, um, of customer demand that are impacting you as a provider of services and, and products to them? Um, and I'll, I'll let you guys pick who wants to, to start first. Nate, you're smiling, so I feel sure, like Sure, I'll you. dive in. Um, so I think one of the things that the cloud has, has enabled is amazing advances in machine learning. Um, and specifically from our perspective in natural language understanding and natural language generation. And we're seeing clients embrace this uh, you know, clients like, like, like Morningstar who are sitting on massive repositories of text and are generating massive repositories of text, their businesses are on the cusp of a, of a massive change. Because all text over the next number of years, and it's a lot closer than you might think, is going to either be generated by machines or is, and is definitely going to be analyzed by machines. And that is going to change the finance industry uh, very profoundly. At its core, the business models of, of, of uh, whether it's data providers or news providers or research providers uh, are, are really going to, to shift as this new dynamic uh, and new capabilities emerge. Um, and it also has profound implications for the investment world. You know, being able to treat information in, when it's in text or when it's spoken with the same level of rigor that you do towards fundamental data, towards valuation and stock price movements, uh, represents a sea change. Really the ability to capture your view of the world, capture what's important to you. Warren Buffett says as an example that the best way to analyze a, a, a company or the most important factor is their ability to raise prices without hurting demand. Uh, but that's very difficult to measure in the numbers. But you can measure it in terms of how, they, how companies talk about their business, how they talk about their ability to raise prices. Uh, and being able to incorporate that very clearly into your investment theses just represents such a, an important change. And it's happening today. And it's, it's really exciting. And I think that has accelerated in a material way over the course of the last two years. Awesome. Eddie, from your perspective? Yeah, um, Nathaniel, I'm having flashbacks to Target's earnings call where they talked about how, you know, they were kind of screwed with the logistics issues recently. Um, but in general, I would say the cloud has really enabled um, more funds to participate in large data investments. So typically, you know, a few years ago, four or five years ago, you'd see the same names, the same players, quantitative funds leading the game, uh, leading the quantum mental strategies. Now we're seeing a lot more smaller shops pop up. You don't have to manage your infrastructure anymore. It's much easier to basically do grid compute, large scale calculations, also set up your own data warehouse, things like that. These are things that used to be managed in, in house year, like five, 10 years ago. And so you're breaking down the barriers for all these other funds. Uh, also, um, more recently, the alternative data space, what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of trends happening. So um, re recently, like the, the, the retail investment craze with uh, GameStop and things like that, uh, one of the data sets that you know, we, we put out was like the UREF data set, which is tracking retail order flows. Uh, people got really excited about that. But the alt data space is very, very much like fads, right? These fads keep happening. There's like the ESG fad um, that seems to be, you know, like it's not really a fad, it's just evolving, right? Like it's not the same as it was two, three years ago, like the, in the context of ESG. And then finally for us, we're also onboarding a lot of our technology into the cloud. So um, like we, we announced a partnership with AWS to, to create a, a, a basically completely cloud-based exchange. Um, and we, we've also put our largest data feed, which is NCDS, onto, uh, onto the cloud as well. And, uh, and our team is, is very heavy user of Databricks and AWS um, deploying you know, notebooks, doing large scale compute without needing an infrastructure team to really manage the whole process. So. Absolutely, and just like a comment on, on NCDS on cloud, this is, this is the feed that is empowering fintechs um, in order to um, you know, be able to provide like cheap and like cost effective, if you will, like access and, and scale to um, the retail investors. So just wanted to 
throw in here that we, we've actually worked together on, on a number of, um, um, I guess, uh, integrations of NCDS into, um, you know, uh, retail investing apps, and, and that's somewhere where we're, you know, going to market together. So I, I can see that transformation happening. Um, last but not least, Anthony. Yeah, I would just add that the retail explosion over the last several years has been, you know, totally incredible for our business. Um, when you think about where, how has this all happened? Uh, you think about discount brokers leading to online brokers, leading to passive robo managed portfolio solutions, uh, leading to now emerging brokerages, right? There's so many options to build an elegant portfolio with a slick app experience. Uh, and now we have this new wave, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but there's this digital uh, hedge fund. So it's essentially a small investment management team that wants to uh, unlock you know, a basket of stocks. And so uh, I think all of us as leaders in this room, we have a, a, real, a real duty to, uh, to ensure that these new investors, we're talking about hundreds of millions of accounts that are opening, uh, we have a duty to ensure that they you know, don't get burned, that they have a good experience, uh, that they're delivered rich insights that are uh, easy to understand and consume. So you know, that's what we've done with the Robin Hoods of the world is kind of make our research a little bit more bite-sized and easy to consume. Uh, that's been exciting for us. And I think you know, another uh, impact is um, you know, certainly the, the evolution so of the investor and how they are maybe a younger uh, investor and they're, 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 they understand how to interact with LinkedIn and Instagram, right? It curates information and insights and things that you want to look at. Well, why shouldn't your portfolio do the same? So they come with new expectations around what a portfolio looks like. And so Morningstar has coined the term uh, active personalization, which is really just direct indexing, but we'll be launching uh, some tools in that category to help advisors really unlock and uh, deconstruct an index and rip it apart into its pieces to, to build something that aligns with an investor's goals. Um, and then I think the last thing um, is that, you know, new hires at organizations uh, are coming on with new skill sets, right? Coding, development, Python skills. And so with AWS, we partnered with, um, with AWS to launch an analytics lab. And it's a part of our flagship research product, Morningstar Direct. Uh, where essentially you're combining a Jupyter notebook with Morningstar data to really unlock lots of different deep, rich insights so that investors could kind of break apart Morningstar's methodology, build their own methodologies, um, and share it with teams. So that's been, that's been exciting and it's changes we've seen. Yeah, absolutely. That collaborative aspect of, you know, multiple, um, you know, um, employees like touching the same data, having the same golden source, like being able to, you know, manipulate it and, and collaborate on their investment thesis, I think is really, really valuable. 